Hey everyone. I feel like there's a lot of shared interest between what I usually talk about, history and exploration, kind of being in the wilderness and being a survivalist, and therefore what modern weapon systems. So I wanted to talk about, maybe give you a little bit of a review about one of my favorite modern weapon systems, and it's in fact my nightstand gun. It's a Steyr M series pistol. Now, I have two different variants here. I have the M40A1, of course, whenever you mess with the firearm. Bracket, make sure it's not loaded. And then I have an L9A1. First, I'll give you a little bit of background on what these pistols are. The M-Series pistol came out right around the turn of the millennium as a striker-fired variant of the basic Austrian design. So it was designed by a guy by the name of Wilhelm Bobitz that worked for Glock and wanted to make some improvements on Glock's design. Glock said, why fix something that's not broke? So we went to the competing Austrian arms manufacturer of Steyr. One of the main improvements they wanted to, that uh, Wilhelm wanted to do was a fully supported chamber. 40 caliber was gaining in spe steam. Most uh, American law enforcement agencies were adopting the 40 caliber. And so Glock, which was originally designed with a 9mm, decided to drill out and the chamber to fit the larger diameter round cartridge. So what they did is they just drilled it out, which meant that the casing didn't fit all the way in there. And in extremely rare cases, we could have catastrophic failure if the brass casing was reloaded too much or what have you. So therefore, to remove any chance of that happening, Wilhelm created a ground-up gun, similar in design, but different around the 40 caliber cartridge. What was created was known as the M40. Model 40. The gun had a couple other improvements. It basically had this new type of trapezoidal sight. Really, really interesting for <clears throat> quick acquisition. Some people aren't used to them when you first shoot it, but it is really, really good. It's point and shoot. I mean, there's nothing wrong with any other type of sight, but these these grow on you, and I really like quirky things, so it works perfect for me. <clears throat> Another thing he did was he lowered the barrel axis 5 millimeters, which doesn't really seem like a lot, but of course we know that the 40 caliber is a shortened version of the 10 millimeter. What's well, half 10 millimeters, but five millimeters. So it was actually lowering it, lowering it half of the height of the cartridge. That gives you more perceived muzzle flip by sitting it lower. Another thing it did, 111 degree angle. So therefore, when you're grabbing the gun to point forward, your wrist is at a more natural, more ergonomic point, natural pointing angle. So therefore, you're not all you're not awkwardly up here like some other guns and you have when you're firing the gun it going into your body's natural response supposedly it puts you on top uh, target a little bit quicker i don't think i nor many people are actually good enough to see if that works i do have some friends that have done wonders with these guns though, that are in law enforcement and in federal agencies so this gun came out and in 2004 they upgraded it to the M40A1. The original gun had more of a bulky round grip. What they did was slim the profile of it. They put <coughs> Picatinny tack rail on the front of it just to make it a little bit more attract attractive towards law enforcement communities. My gun itself was a Rhode Island State Police gun. Rhode Island was one of the few uh, departments that adopted this gun before the value of the dollar dropped. When the value of the dollar dropped in around 2006-2007, these guns just 
were too expensive and people couldn't justify buying them. Steyer couldn't sell them for a price that would attract people, so they stopped importation and sold off the whole lot to CDNN, who then fire sailed, and you could get these guns for about $300 at a time when they were about a $1,000 gun. Super tight tolerances, great craftsmanship, you know, all the typical German Teutonic markings on there, no expensive spared in these guns. They're just great. They have the safety trigger like a Glock, a loaded chamber indicator, like I said, the really cool sight, low barrel access, natural pointing. One of the big critiques of this gun was that it got a gritty trigger when it was heated up. Not all of them had that, and I, for one, did not experience that. The answer was a Delrin or Teflon cup that went around the firing pin that kind of smoothed things out. Now, you can get those from BT Guide Rods. I think it's btguiderods.com, but you can just search it. And also, that gentleman makes metal guide rods. So, I did install one of them to get this gun apart. Of course, pull the trigger. Depress that. Slide that toggle down. And the gun slides apart super easy. They went for a few parts with these. There's uh, being a striker fired and without external safeties and all that. There's only about 50 parts. Some other guns do have less, but these are pretty simplistic. They use a traditional land and groove rifling as opposed to polygonal on some of the other higher end European guns. A traditional land and groove, of course, lets you shoot lead bullets out of it, which saves you a little bit of money. You'll see here's this huge supported chamber. It uses the Browning short recoil system. And the reason I put in the metal guide rod was to put a little bit of weight up front. This gun is a four inch barrel and I can't carry concealed because I live in New Jersey and I live in Sweden. So I wouldn't mind a little bit of extra length out there, especially when I'm shooting with my friends that are Air Marshal, Secret Service, FBI, and have thousands and thousands and thousands of hours into their training for their muscle memory. But these guns are super accurate. They're point and click. Put it back together, literally, just rack it. Um, trigger, about four pounds. The reset of the trigger, super silent. Just a quality gun overall. It has a 12 round magazine. Pretty nice, not the highest out there, but certainly enough rounds. This is my bed stand gun. Really nice, I like the loaded chamber indicator. That way if somebody comes to the house, I just swipe my thumb across it and I know that I'm ready to go. <clears throat> when they reintroduced these guns back into the US, they expanded the product line. There actually was a couple of the S series. These guns are offered in 9, 40, and 357 SIG, known as the M9 A1, excuse me, M40 A1 and M357 A1. They introduced the S. The S version has a three and a half inch barrel, a little bit better for concealed. And then when they reintroduced it to the US, they introduced the C version. The C version having, oh, and the S has a slightly shorter handle. Uh, the grip is shorter, I think 10 rounds for the 40. So the C series has the shorter barrel, but the larger magazine capacity. Finally, something that they did that people had clamored for for a long time was to make a larger variant to go with the M and the S. They made an L, small, medium, and large. This gun has a four and a half inch barrel, and this is the nine millimeter version. You'll see a few more serrations on the front, same fit and finish, really quality gun. Oh, this has traction grips on it, tractiongrips.com. Really nice, eight bucks, and I've put thousands of rounds down range with those on there. Another thing they did to remove the grittiness people talk about, they put a roll pin right in there, and they moved the loaded chamber indicator over as in not to impede the roll pin. Now you'll see this gun has the same trapezoidal sights, 
same grip angle, very low barrel axis, and therefore, I mean, this thing, I didn't even put the metal guide rod in because you have no perceived recoil anyway. There's 15 rounds as the state I live in, that's the maximum, but you can get 17 plus one rounds. So you're at 18 rounds, you basically got as much firing power as any of the other things out there. Again, super quiet trigger reset. This gun's trigger is a little bit smoother out the box. I never really felt any of the grittiness. It's a little bit of lighter trigger. You know, so here is one other feature that I didn't mention before. And this other feature is the addition of a safety. These guns adhere to most of the regulations in different parts of the world and regulations keep getting more strict. So in addition to having this safety and the loaded chamber indicator, they also have this little safety right here. Push it in, turn the key, and you can't pull the trigger, and you can't rack the slide. So what happens if the slide's already racked? Now you can't pull the trigger. So just another little fail safe. I don't use that stuff. I don't know why I really would. But, hey, it's on there. It's regulations in some part of the world. And these guns are just great guns. I love them. They're my nightstand gun. They're also something that I can go out with, have some fun. Kind of tactical. You know, it's just, or, well, they are tactical. Great gun. Of course, they're interchangeable. So if you're in some kind of crazy post-apocalyptic scenario, you can put the slide on whatever frame and be good to go as long as you have the proper magazine and barrel for the cartridge you're trying to shoot. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope uh, this changes some people out there view. They see me in my videos with long hair and they think I'm some kind of hippie. I'm not a hippie, just a viking. So hope you all get a chance to shoot a gun like this. They're just really a dream to shoot. A wonderful pistol and something I'll never let go of. I'm a pretty brand loyal kind of guy and these guns are what made me brand loyal to Steyr. I have some antique Steyrs. I also have an AUG, so I'll show you all that later one day. Army Universal Gewehr. I kind of hate when people say AUG, but that's off the point. So thank you for watching, and enjoy your own Nordic journey.